The following interview is with Paul Kingsnorth, an Englishman living on a small farm in Western Ireland. He's an acclaimed novelist, uh, essayist, and poet. And he has quite a remarkable story of uh, coming to Christianity and uh, orthodoxy in particular. Uh, that was the, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to him to get his story recorded. He wrote a lovely essay called um, The Cross and the Machine in First Things, which I will link to below this video. And you can read more in depth his story The Abbey of Misrule is a series of essays I'm writing on, on Substack, which I just started doing a few months ago. Um, and really, actually, it's, a, it's an attempt to explore some of what we've been talking about here. Um, there's this notion that we're living in the age of the machine, where you have this enmeshing matrix of kind of state power, technological power, um, uh, a kind of deep immersion in, in technology, ecological collapse. We're living in this new age where uh, this this kind of global machine, if you like, is 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 enmeshing all societies and cultures together and taking us down into this um, into this this kind of yeah matrix of of control and technology that we all find ourselves caught up in. And so, really, what I'm doing is I'm trying to write a series of regular essays, just exploring what this is and why it's happened and where it's come from and what it means and what the current manifestations of it are in the West, you know, politically and culturally. So it's a, it's a kind of an ongoing exploration, actually, which I'm, I'm enjoying writing. It's quite hard work, but it's it's good. And I've got a really interesting, really smart collection of readers on there, actually, which is seems to be, I don't know where they've all come from, but they've they, there's a lot of really, really interesting people that are teaching me a lot as well. So it's actually turning into a really good kind of salon, if you like, to, to really discuss the, the meat of a lot of what we've been talking about here, but just the kind of the modern crisis, if you like. Uh, and trying to get to the depths of it, trying to get beyond the sort of surface battles about culture wars and particular daily issues and trying to work out what the what the streams underneath it are, I suppose, as much as I can. So that's that's what that's about. Mm. Yeah, well, Savage Gods was the kind of book that I wrote when I was having a giant midlife crisis. Um, and when I look back on it now, I see it as a as a prelude to my becoming Christian, actually, because it was at the heart of it. And I knew this even at the time was it is a great kind of spiritual crisis of meaning. Um, and it wasn't specifically a religious crisis or anything, but it was, you know, it was very much manifested to me in my my sort of losing faith in writing, getting to the point where having written 10 books or so for 20 years, I was starting to see words as uh, a wall rather than a door, uh, something that got in the way of reality. I think it's going to happen to a lot of writers. You spend so much time with the kind of abstraction of language that you confuse it for reality. And so it was very much about that um, and what that meant and after that book had finished, I actually made a vow. I said, I'm not going to write anything new for a year and a day, um, which is a good magical number. Um, and I didn't either. And I didn't. Uh, and I got to a year and a day and I still didn't want to write anything. So there was late 18 months or two years where I had nothing really to write except the odd, odd little thing. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'm not a writer anymore. Um, and and I, I was sort of ambivalent about what that meant. Uh, in some ways, it would be nice to be relieved of the obligation to put all my thoughts down all the time because it, it's, a, it's a thing that drives writers. We, we, we have to just, we have to write and it's quite hard work sometimes. So I was, I was sort of looking forward to retiring, but not that I could have afforded to. But, um, but in the end, um, the, I, I think that, for, I mean, firstly, I became a Christian and then, then, then my worldview shifted. Um, and I felt that sort of sense of crisis that I had had gone. And then secondly, just the, the sort of ramping chaos of the world and my desire to try and understand it meant that I got to the point a couple of years after writing that book where I wanted to start writing again, as I say, and I'm just doing it through this essay series in a little private place on Substack that you have to subscribe to for a few pounds a month, which means that I'm, I'm sort of slightly behind a firewall, which is quite nice, um, away from the madness of the internet. Um, and I can just really say what I want to say. And, and you know, again, it's for me personally as a writer, um, if, if, when, I'm, when I'm stuck, when I'm looking at society and thinking what the hell's going on or this issue I'm worried about or this thing I'm interested in, the only way I can deal with it is by writing it down. 
Uh, and that's what I did. It's what I've done for forever, really. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying to work, I'm, I'm trying to work out for myself what the heck is going on in the world um, and, and turning that into a series of essays and talking to others about it. So, so yeah, I, I eventually came back from my exile, I suppose, into words. But it's um, yeah, with 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 my with my new faith, it feels a little bit different somehow. One of the questions I was asking in Savage Gods is, you know, what what god does your word serve? Um, actually, and that's you know that wasn't that was almost a, a symbolic god rather than an actual god, but it works in either 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 context. Um, you know, what are you doing with your writing? It has to be pointing towards something. It has to be serving something. It has to have a purpose for existing. I think for me anyway. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, I, I suppose I came to the reluctant conclusion that writing is what we do and writing is what I do as well. It's the only thing I can do really. <laughs> so if I want to, if I want to say anything or do anything, I have to, to some degree do it through words. So it is a question, I suppose, what, what God your words are serving, you know, what purpose they're serving, what you're trying to do with them and how you're doing it. Did ears burn out those words? Did a voice whisper absurd? Did your mind comprehend and ask if you'd last till the end? 